Welcome, everybody. We have Kathy with us. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I'm super happy to be here. You know, I I have I always take the opportunity to be with people and to share. You know, I think it's really important that we share what we've got, who we are, and where we can make a difference out in the world. So, um, you know, I I like to say what I do best is I have people go from stuck to unstuck. And it actually doesn't really much matter what the area is because the little voice in our head and the view that we're trapped in because we're human beings has us see life a certain way, see ourselves a certain way, see others a certain way and see whatever's going on in in particular inside of a particular view. And that view has people be stuck. And I've never met a human being on the face of the earth that doesn't experience that. So I have people go from what they think is real and the view they think they have to where they can be free, fully self-expressed and powerful in whatever matters to them. Kathy, my name is Dan. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, I'm going to be getting to know you tonight along with our audience as we ask questions and you answer those questions and share more about your life couple of things I connect with immediately. I do mental coaching, right, for sports. Where I tried to connect the dots was I like sports the best, but I also had so many people coming to me who were just, you know, people of everyday life who played no sports. And um, like you said it, there's a way to help people regardless of their situation in life. Even if your focus might be sports, like you said, people get stuck in all areas. So I was trying to come up with some sort of way to represent that. So I thought, okay, Everybody in life has something, and I termed it a performance event, like a place where they're being compared to others, or they're judged, or there's some sort of scorecard, right? And so for different people, for a student, that's your report card. And for a lawyer, that may be like in the courtroom. And like you could look at each person, you say, there are areas of your life where you have performance events, just like athletes have games. And if you look at it, you've you probably identified there are definite patterns between regular people with everyday lives and athletes that you say there's a direct correlation. I can help them get unstuck, whether they're un- they're stuck in a sport mindset thing or whether they're stuck in a life thing. So can you share a little bit more about, even though you can help in all areas, are there areas that you specialize in or like the most? Yeah, this is great. And I have no idea. I've met you five minutes ago. But we actually probably share a lot in common. My background is in sports psychology. Uh, I coached for 16 years. The most recent college was LSU. And um, the most recent professional team was a team called the Durham Dragons. It was women's professional softball. And the thing I'm known most for, aside from being in two Hall of Fames, is that I could have an athlete go from being inside their thoughts, being their thoughts, being their last performance, being the fact that they've struck out twice in a row to focused on what's here, what's important now. Like I call it win. What's important right in this, literally this very second. And, and inside of my ability to coach them and all the different techniques that I taught the athletes over the years, um, it had ordinary athletes go from ordinary to extraordinary because I really believe the difference in performance. And I believe this with anyone, not just athletes, anyone can be extraordinary. Anyone can go beyond who they know themselves to be, what they know they can do to something that's never been done before, or certainly something that's not predictable, if you would. So the area is, what a great question, Dan, because human beings are human beings. Doesn't matter whether you're on the softball field, baseball field, football field, or whether you're a lawyer or whether you're um, you know, an executive or maybe you're an entrepreneur. The one thing we all have in common is, this, is the way we're raised, the things that happen to us in our life have us see life a particular way. And I know this because I've met with people like Pete Rose. I had a hand in the Cubs winning the World Series. Now, it's a fascinating story. We could go into that if you ever want to find out how that happened. But it all is around this thing called where we're stuck, the view that we're stuck in as a human being. And everyone has it. And it started early in age. Something happened. The moment it happened, usually around age five, 
we made a decision, but we didn't know we made a decision. A five-year-old doesn't even know what a decision is. We made a decision about us, about life, and about how things will occur or how things do occur. My particular decision was that I'm actually not enough and that the world doesn't care. Doesn't care about me, doesn't care about you, doesn't care about COVID, doesn't care about politics. That's my particular flavor of it. How that shows up in life, to compensate for not being enough, I went out and became one of the top coaches in the world in my sport. I went out and, and got into, you know, won enough games to be in two Hall of Fames. I work with Olympic athletes, the best of the best in C, you know, CEOs and things like that. I literally compensated for not being enough. Now, this is the key thing. At the end of the day, after maybe having just won a game, maybe just coached someone to perform something extraordinary. What I went to sleep with was, doggone it, I'm still not enough. Nothing I could do would make the difference. And that's when I started to do work in the world of transformation, in the world of um, sports psychology, in the world of just uh, human beings. What is it about human beings that has us no matter how good of an actor or actress you are, no matter how good of an athlete you are, no matter how much money you have, no matter how awesome your marriage is, no matter how great your environment is and your health has us be in this space of, yeah, this isn't it. I'm not it. You're not it. It just isn't it. So that's, that's the area, you know, it is really for all people. Why? Because we're all human. But athletes, I find, are some of the toughest because they're so programmed that it has to look a certain way. It has to be a certain way. If you don't win, it's the only profession I know where you can be 95% effective and still either lose your job or lose something. Um, you know, so I, I'll never forget, this was many years ago. I think it was a football coach. It might've been at Alabama even. You know, the guy won every game the whole season, every game of the season, but lost the championship game, lost his job. <laughs> so, you know, that's what it is to be human. Your entire resume and history of work is incredible. I, I, knew, I had no knowledge, just like you didn't have of me, of your incredible background. So that's awesome. I'm glad you're here to share this with us. One of the things that you said just hit a point with me, which was I used to work for Tony Robbins, and um, he used to say, Humans two biggest fears are number one, we're not good enough. And because we don't think we're good enough, we don't think we're lovable. And so, um, and to be not good enough connects perfectly with what you're talking about, right? Like you said, that was your thing. And it means something different to everybody. And it means something different depending on your performance event or performance events, because we have them in different areas. Like we just said, like you may have one in your professional life. But you also may have them in your personal life, like on the dating scene or right, or even as a parent or different things that you have these roles where being we even if we're not, we feel like we're being judged and we're constantly evaluating. Am I good enough to the judges of my world? And nowadays we're giving our expanded world to like social media and these people who care so much about likes and other people's comments and opinions. Um, so we've expanded not being good enough. Like you said, like you could go 99% the entire year and lose the last game. And then suddenly you're not good enough because you lost the last game. So we're not looking at it in the big picture. We could go down so many rabbit holes and talk about that forever. Um, but we're going to jump into some questions that we put together for you tonight. This is a question that Ivy and I always ask our coaching clients. And we ask them this because what we're trying to determine, is there something that they always wanted? Is there something that they wish they would have pursued, but maybe they felt like it was impossible or the odds were too low. So the question is, if I was a genie and I could grant you just one wish, what would be that wish? But I'm going to give you some rules. One is you can't wish for more wishes and you can't wish to become the genie or the wish giver because that would kind of be cheating the system. So this is something that you could obtain, you could be, you could have a skill or talent or have something on your resume that you don't have now. What would be that for you? Well, this might sound a little bit like how a coach would respond, but it's actually very authentic for me because, you know, human beings are always in this, you know, did I do it right? Did I not do it right? Am, am I enough? Am I not enough? You know, should I, shouldn't I? Is this good? Is this bad? Uh, so what I would wish, and it's actually part of what I do in working with people, is that you could 
peel away this mask. You could take, you had this power where you could take the Darth Vader mask off of people so that they could actually be present to who they are and more importantly, who they're not. And they could get to experience what it is to just be, be with people be with themselves, be with what's possible, what's possible, not what's likely or predictable, but what's possible. Human beings, because of the, you know, it's, I'll call it the amygdala hijack. That actually is a term in, in, out in the world. Um, But we're so crazy that we, we can't even be with how awesome each one of us is. We can't be with how awesome a relationship is. You might be in the perfect relationship, happier than you've ever been before. You know, the love of your life, like literally like of all the 7 billion people or however many there are in the world, you found the one. And yet we'll find a way to sabotage that. We'll find a way to have that not work. And it's all inside of this human phenomenon. So if I could have one wish, it would be the magical power of, taking that mask off and letting a human being discover for the first time who they actually are when you scrape away all the pretense, all the stuff that has been built on us over the years of not lovable, not enough, not this, not that, and could actually just get present, you know, the extraordinary human being that they are. So that reminded me of two things. One is um, there's a Ryan Holiday book called Ego is the Enemy. And it was almost like you're saying if we could remove people's desire for significance and for like trying to prove themselves and like answer that question, am I good enough? The other one is there's a book from a gentleman named Lewis Howes called The Mask of Masculinity. And again, I think it applies to all genders, but it is um, that he's saying that people tend to wear masks because they have to cover up, right? Like the insecurity parts of them. So they step into this role, but not in a good way. It's like they're covering up their vulnerabilities they're covering up the true essence of who they are. So you're saying like, remove that mask destroy the ego and let people be their authentic self and like experience the world where people get to come across each other and their authentic selves. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. And it shows up differently for different people, for women. I, I built a wellness company years ago because I was so tired of, you know, finding out about these weight loss programs that were like, cut out all the calories or, you know what, eliminate an entire food group, like just eliminate all the carbs or just... I was like, that's insane. That's crazy. So I built a program and believe it or not, the whole thing was on empowering people to discover what's really important to them and who they really are. And in the process, people started losing weight and they were coming to me like, wait a minute, I'm not really doing anything. I'm not suffering. I'm not challenged. I'm not like, I'm not really doing much different, but I do have this vision of dancing at my daughter's wedding. And at the rate I'm going, They'll have to carry me to the bathroom when my daughter gets married. And these people got so empowered. They started hiking. They started traveling. Lo and behold, they started choosing good things. They started finding that they loved healthy foods. They lost weight. So inside of that, it literally was giving up this like idea of who we think we are and and what we think needs to happen. And this crazy you know, this crazy, like I said, this crazy view we have of ourselves, and society does it. So that's women, that's for a lot of women and some men, but then there's the whole world of um, successful people, accomplished people, whether it's CEOs of companies or whatever. A lot of that success has come from surviving something, not creating, not creating. It's been surviving. It's like growing up, their dad said something when they were on the ball field, like you don't deserve son to be wearing that uniform. And that has haunted them their entire life. Now they're the CEO of a company, seven billion dollar, million dollar company, but that's not enough. Because what's running the show in the background is always, yeah, my dad always said, I don't deserve it and I'll never amount to anything. So it's, we're constantly going through life chasing this one day, someday boy, one day, but that one day actually never gets here. So, you know, that's, that's the thing that, that I think a good coach can do is have someone see that that story, and it literally is a story that you made up 
your version is different than mine, but everyone has one, has literally been carried almost like a sack of garbage on our back. And we carry it everywhere. We carry it in every relationship. We carry it in every business opportunity. And no matter what we do, it's there until you discover how to actually let it go. And it's interesting, as a young coach, I didn't really know a whole lot about the what to do and what not to do. I went straight from graduate school into coaching. So I literally became a coach. And what I said was, I don't really know how to inspire these people and how to motivate them. I know how to teach them how to hold a bat and swing and all that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to really empower them. I'm going to let them know that nothing, the, the outcome of any game has nothing to do with the opponent. Nothing. Like the opponent will do what the opponent does. They might have the best pitcher in the country. They might have the best hitter in the world. But what we do, we have everything to say about. And I believe that with human beings is what we think, what we believe, what we create, we have everything to say about. Now we're programmed. We're programmed if you're not the right size, if you don't make the right amount of money, if you're not even the right color, let's go there. If you're not even the right color. You know, but but at the end of the day, no, we are in charge of who we are, what we believe, what we think, and what we create. And that's, I think, the secret to everything. You couldn't have said it better. More than anything else, one of your greatest gifts is your ability to be present with somebody and really help them get clear. Because that's something you've done with me. And I love when you get present. You really, really help us see the possibilities, see the real us. And and this is what I love about this. is like, this is our authentic self. This is how you get to live your true life and not live a life that's based on someone else's expectations, not live a story that, um, and you are constantly asking yourself, is this the story that I want to live? Is this the meaning that I want to give it? Because we often forget that when we're just going about life and then all of a sudden it's like, why am I doing this? Is this even, you know, is this what what I really should be doing or what I really want to do? So I do want to know what beliefs or habits have shaped you so the habits and beliefs that shaped me to win, I don't even know. I was looking at those balls the other day up there on the wall, and I don't know, it was 500, 500 wins or something. And I was like, how'd that happen? Like, I, I couldn't even fathom winning that many games. Um, but the beliefs and, the, and, and what shaped me early on as a young athlete, as a, a young coach, Uh, just as a young human being were um, no matter what you do, it will never be enough. That was literally a belief that shaped me. No matter how many games I won, no matter what I did, it was, I wasn't it. I wasn't, I couldn't win enough games to actually shift that story to, no, I'm like, perfect, whole, and complete. There's really nothing wrong here. I mean, literally, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, there's nothing wrong here. Um, Once I did the work that I did, uh, which was a really huge journey for me, is I realized a couple of things. And one of the beliefs that I've really adopted is that everything is made up. Everything is made up. I mean, (laughs) I have people argue with me. I say, there's no truth. And they'll say, yes, there is. I'll say, what? They'll say, the sun rose this morning. That's a truth. I'll say, no, it didn't. It's an illusion. The sun actually does not rise. <laughs> it's an illusion. And, and so, you know, what I've discovered over the years is that our whole world, everything around us, who we are, what we have, what we become, has been shaped by what we created, what we spoke literally in the beginning you know there's this or man on the moon whether it's kennedy or will win a world series everything is shaped by our speaking and if you listen to people people have it like what they're doing is describing what's happening i tell them no you've got it backwards you're creating what's happening think of abracadabra as you speak so it is I've had people literally say X, Y, Z, and it shows up. And I'm like, you created that. And they're like, I couldn't have. And I'll say, you did. (laughs) Um, 
And then I've had people say, if you're going to make up that, make up something really good. If it's all made up, and I do believe it, I believe all of our life is made up. Even the stuff we have, the money we have, money is energy. <laughs> That's even made up. Um, if you're going to create a bad story or something that destructs your life, is destructive, why not make up a really good story? Why not make up a story that you you deserve the best in life? Like like the best things in life are right around the corner. Something great's going to happen for you tomorrow. Something great's going to happen for you. And when people start operating inside of that and start saying something different, even if it's subtle, even if it's like, I'll never, ba, 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 ba. I wish I could, ba, 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 ba. and you shift that to, um, I'm committed to this, or I'm experiencing this. And you just shift even one word. It literally creates a whole world, it creates a whole world. So that's the belief and the structure and how I live life today is I'm very responsible what comes out of my mouth. I mean, so much so I'm very highly trained. I will catch myself, stop and redirect it because I, I, I believe that my words actually create a world. You know, you say something enough times, people believe it. And your subconscious, your, your mind can't even tell the difference between not, it can't tell the difference. So that and then thoughts, and we all know you guys are experts at this, your thoughts shape your beliefs and your, you know, your, your behaviors and your actions and all that. So those are two things, be, beliefs that I have is that be responsible for what you're thinking. And, and a lot of people will think, well, that's not possible. My brain just does its thing. No, 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 no. You're completely in charge of it. You just don't know it. You got to have techniques. You got to be able to push pause. I have one. I think I've shared it with you, Ivy. Ivy. It's called, um, well, I don't, it doesn't have a name. When you have an upset or when you've got a thought like, man, I'm not doing a very good job here. Look at them. They're listening to me. Man, I totally blew that last comment. The moment I have a thought that's a limiting belief kind of thought, I have a technique where I stop. Physically, language, everything stops interrupts it, time out, stop. And I literally get present to what am I listening? Where am I listening from? Am I listening from some victim, some, I don't know, or am I listening from, you know, anything is possible. I'm great. You're great. We're all great. Nothing's wrong here. And inside of that listening, I then take the next action, whether I create something cool, say something cool, or keep going down the rabbit hole or the tunnel where there's no cheese. And it's a technique that's so simple yet so powerful. That is super, super powerful advice. And I think Ivy and I both agree wholeheartedly on almost every word you said. What though have you heard in your experience that you don't think is good advice and you want to protect people? You're like, no, no, no. If somebody says this, run for the hills or like do the opposite because you hear it being told to people and you don't think it's good advice. What's that advice? Well, I, I believe if anything works for you, go for it. If it works, use it. If it doesn't, don't. So some things work for some people that I would I would shake my head and think, oh wow, I don't I don't think that's great advice. I don't know. It might be something like you're not disciplined enough. Like you need more discipline. You need to be disciplined. If you had discipline, you could do it. So discipline yourself. Good luck. Uh, I, that might be one thing. Uh, the other, let's see, advice. Um, work harder. Go work on yourself. You, you need to work on yourself more. I actually don't subscribe to that. I really believe sometimes you got to just let go. Like all the work we've done has gotten us to, now I don't mean don't have a coach. <laughs> that is a belief I do have. I think everyone in the world, I don't care who you are, how successful, the more successful, the more you need a coach, everyone needs a coach. But I don't believe people need to quote work on themselves. I think what they need to do is discover how to get present, how to be here now, like right here, right here, right now. Not on what just happened, not on what could happen, not on the past, not on the future, because most of the future isn't the future. The thoughts you have about the future are us putting our past garbage into the future. So it's like throwing a bunch of garbage in your clean room and then walking into the room and saying, doggone it, I just walked in and it's messy already. Yeah, we human beings have a tendency to put what happened into the future. We just keep pulling it forward. So 
that would be the advice that I would say would be bad advice would be, you know, like just work harder, man, you, or you're not disciplined enough, or you don't care, you know, none of that. We are so programmed and so wired um, that we're not even really needed. <laughs> it's like, we have thoughts and we don't even know where they came from. They all come from the past. Almost every single thought we have rarely is anything new said, discovered, thought. It's all past-based. Uh, so that's that's what I think is the gold is how could you create the space of nothing, like a blank canvas, where on that space you can create anything. Most people can't do that. And that's one of the things I train people in is how do you get to a blank ca canvas? It's already filled with stuff. How do you get there? Well, there's ways to do it and it takes something, but that's what I think it takes to create something powerful in your life is to be able to get to nothing, a blank canvas. And then with your speaking and your listening, create what you want. If to be more disciplined is not necessarily the best advice, what's the, what's the advice instead of be more disciplined? I would get really flat, really clear what's important to you. You know, we spend our entire life doing something, being some way, so that one day we could have what we want. And yet most human beings are not even clear at all of what they want, what's important to them. I've had people, I've had clients tell me my family's the most important thing to me. And yet they spend every waking minute at work, no time with family. And I'll say, really? And they'll say, really? I'm doing that for family. Really? You know, so, so um, you know, the, the advice... I don't know. There's a lot of advice out there. I just, I just think that again, as human beings, um, you can't, we can't see what's blocking us and what's right in front of us. We call them blind spots. No different than you driving a car down the road. And there you are, Dan, you're going to get in the other lane. And Ivy's like, Dan, what are you doing? There's a car there. He honks at you. You're like, I didn't see it. If I saw it, I wouldn't have done it. Human beings have blind spots. And the bad advice is the stuff that tells people things like, you shouldn't have blind spots. Why do you do that? Just eat healthier. Just run more. Go, go exercise. Or just do this. Or just, you know, just be loving and caring with your spouse. Or just treat your employees right. You know, or just don't swing at bad pitches. I, I think all of that is bad, bad advice. Why? Because if we had the access, if people knew how to do that, don't you think they'd be doing it? There's more at play here. There's way more at play here. So that's, I don't know if it's bad advice. I just don't think it doesn't work. That's why people buy gym memberships and then never use them. That's why people go on diets. It's the number one selling book, I would imagine, other than maybe a book you guys have out. Probably the number one selling book is how to lose weight. Because <laughs> everybody's tried everything and nothing seems to work because that's not it. That's not your access to it. I wanted to ask one last question. And this was, this had to do with, what is the best advice we can give to our audience? Because you shared so many golden nuggets. And I, I'm going to re-listen to this again, just because I want to soak it all in. I'm a believer in training and development, personal development. And while I said, you don't have to do more work, you don't have to work harder. I will train and develop myself till the day I die. I, I believe that I'm either discovering and you know, like shedding all those layers of skin that I thought were me, that aren't me, um, because that's my shot at being empowered and having the life that I say I want. So while I said, you don't have to go bust it, you know, you don't have to work 10 more hours or have three jobs. You do need to do a work, but it's a different kind of work. So the best advice I would say is, Find a coach much like you guys. I'm not even sure what you do. I was invited to be here and I'm, I love to be in this conversation with you. And I love that you're the kind of people out making a difference for people in the world. I would say find a coach that can have you see what you can't see, that blind spot, and have you discover what you've never discovered and have you be what you've always wanted to be, but thought you couldn't be. And, and do that inside of, your development as a human being, like your, like this is your Christmas gift to yourself. Like find somebody who can stand for you when the machinery 
that's making up a whole bunch of stuff can't stand for you. You know, we can stand for other people way more than we can ourselves. It, it's, it's interesting. We can't even take a compliment. Try it. Acknowledge someone for something they've done and you watch how quickly they divert the attention. We can't, all, our whole life we've wanted to be acknowledged, known, recognized, like special, like heard. Some people just want to be heard. And then when they are, they can't be with it. So that the, the best advice I would say would be do that kind of training. Give yourself that kind of gift and stop, you know, thinking you need to read more, one more book, you know, buy one more widget and find, you know, find coaches like yourselves that can, that can um, peel away, like, what I would say is like, that can chip away all of the not David, like the, 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 what is it, the statue of David, you know, the artist just kept chipping away to what wasn't David, and poof, there he was, but it's not, it's literally getting rid of all those bags of garbage that we've been carrying around our whole life. And it is so freeing. I've seen even illnesses turn around when people get that, when people can finally get rid of and let go of that, that, you know, story that they've been carrying around their whole life. It's, and there's, there's different programs out there. There's different coaches out there. There's a whole lot you can do to get free. Uh, but that's what I would say the advice would be is find what sets you free and go for it. Like you deserve it. I don't care what it costs. To me, it's priceless or suffer the rest of your life, suffer and be miserable the rest of your life. I am amazed at your level of um, wisdom that you share with us. Literally, I think we could have this conversation for three hours and we could just go down so many like amazing pathways and uh, of similar interest. Um, I would love to recommend the people listening to reach out to you for coaching or any other services you'd like to provide, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? This might sound bizarre, but I've, I've always been a little unconventional. I'll actually give you my email address and my phone number. You know, it's, it's, you know, there's websites out there and there's, there's all kinds of things. Um, but I really believe in human communication and, um, and connection. And, you know, sometimes people go to sites and they start making up stories about that. Like what? Well, how, how in the heck if, if she's met with Pete Rose, I, I don't, I can't, what, I, I don't, I can't, I'm not in that conversation, but really I would love to talk with anybody who's up to something in their life, somewhere where they're stuck, somewhere where they see a vision, they see, and they have a dream. They, they know there's something possible. They just can't quite discover the blind spot. So my email would be a uh, team, of course. My whole life's been built on teams. T E A M, Kathy, C A T H Y C, at gmail.com. So team Kathy C at gmail.com. And my phone number is 480 292 5322. And this is the fascinating thing. Here again, it goes back to the craziness of human beings. You have no idea how many people I've given my business card to or said, give me a call. I'd love to do coffee via Zoom with you. I'd love to share one thing. Let's have one breakthrough in your life, just one. It'll alter your entire life. And I'll tell you what, I'll give it to you as a gift. People don't call. They don't follow up. Somehow that story of like, yeah, this can't be real. Or yeah, no, but I can't make a difference for me. I'm 52 years old. Nothing's made a difference. So it's fascinating. It'll be interesting to see, you know, who like goes for it, who actually says, you know what? One action, one action could literally mean a life alter, a life in a different direction than it was going to go. One action, turning down one street corner to the left. My dad, when he was in the Navy in downtown Chicago, turned left on a street corner and got lost. My mom happened to be standing there. She lived in Chicago. Had he not turned left, I wouldn't be here. That one action, one action, one decision altered not only his life, my life and all the hundreds of people, thousands of people that I've impacted, one action. So thank you for asking for that. And um, yeah, I'd love to have a conversation with anybody. And I'd love to even deepen this with you guys or have a, a think tank or a brainstorming because, you know, 
we're all on this planet together too. And I bet you at the end of the day, we're all committed to the same thing, like a world that works for everyone, people to be empowered and people to be fulfilled. And there's multiple ways of getting there, but I do believe together we can accomplish anything. I totally agree. And one of the reasons that Ivy and I do this podcast is to give people access to people they may have never come across in their lives. But now through each of us sharing it with our own network of people, we each will meet somebody new, right? Like many people don't know you. Many of your people who are friends with you don't know us. They get to have a chance to even have a brief interaction with us over video or if they listen to the audio version. And then if they're curious, they maybe look us up or reach out to us. So you're absolutely right. I always say like one is better than zero. If you never went up to bat, you can't possibly get a hit. So this isn't at bat we're taking and you never know what it will lead to. We really are just open to just putting it out there and seeing where it leads. So I totally agree. And I encourage anybody listening, you know, if you're thinking, "Ah, I don't know, take, just take the shot, right? Like, you know, or go up to bat and you never know what it might lead to. It could change your life completely. So please, um, we're going to put that information on the screen. Um, Kathy's already given it to you, but reach out to her by email, reach out to her by phone, take a chance and you never know what might happen. Yeah. And what I love about you guys, and I don't even know you, but there's something about energy and there's something, you know, you can get related to somebody in a moment's time, moment, is that you guys operate inside of abundance. You guys, you guys are about, there's, there's enough in the world, like let's, let's share, let's expand. I can't tell you how many people I meet that are afraid to to introduce you to so and so because then there might be less for you or there might be or they're they're afraid to share they're afraid to share their information <laughs> it's ironic i'm just the opposite i'll give people what i might charge somebody five hundred dollars for i'll give it to them in a phone conversation like I, I i'm i'm just like hey it's not mine anyway this is the fascinating thing is, is nothing is new we've all gotten it i can ha- hold up books that talk about us being machines like, yes, we're human, but we're machines. I say this, you think this. You think this, you do this. Like, it's we're machines. We're meaning-making machines. We, you know, there isn't much that can happen. Try it sometime. Like, turn on the radio, and the first sentence you hear, try not to have a thought. Try not to have some judgment or some assessment about what got said. Try not to actually have it impact you. One sentence. You can't do it. You can't do it. That's the machinery that we are. Now, the cool thing about that is machines can be programmed and we have been programmed, but we also can be programmed for anything. You know, you can be programmed to make, you know, hot dogs or you can be programmed to make masks, you know. Um, so that's what I think the, the real beauty is, is that we're not stuck with anything ever. There's always an opportunity to... Um, create something new like literally and you know some of the wisest people are the oldest people but what they don't have anymore is time you know so i love giving away what i've gotten and what i know to make a difference for people and it sounds like you guys do as well that you know you you want a world that works for people and you want people to be empowered and uh and like i said before everyone needs a coach i've yet to meet anyone coaches need coaches I've yet to meet someone that doesn't need a coach and wouldn't actually have uh, something important to them shift as a result of having a coach. That was so beautiful. Thank you so much, Kathy, for joining us, for sharing. That's it, everybody. 